Everybody is now really thinking about not only going to the moon, but going to Mars. It's been 50 years since we stepped on the moon. And uh, I think we've all been waiting for that next step. The good news is that not only is NASA thinking about going to the moon, they're thinking about going to Mars. So are some of the commercial uh, uh, projects out there, such as, you know, Blue Origin and, and uh, also uh, uh, SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, they're, they're already thinking about that. Uh, I think that probably the one that has been most vocal has been Elon Musk with SpaceX. He is really thinking he has a plan to go to Mars. And, uh, but the next step after that, one thing is to go there, then what? You know, what are we going to do? Well, I think the natural response is we're going to colonize Mars. And uh, I know it sounds a little too, you know, out there, very Hollywood, very sci-fi. But no, it is a reality. We are going to Mars and we are going to colonize the Mars. So uh, colonize Mars. So what are what should we be thinking about? Well, we're going to need materials to build over there. What are the types of materials we're going to need? We're going to need materials that are going to have to be light to be able to transport. They're going to have to be functional. They're going to be able to have to withstand some of the extreme temperatures and uh, the uh, harsh environment of Mars. Uh, we're going to have to be able to deal with uh, materials that are going to have to be self, um, they're going to have to be very strong on their own so that we don't have to deal with the uh, seismic conditions of Mars. You know, we really don't even know some of the things that are going, we're going to run into uh, up there. There could be highly corrosive materials, uh, uh, the lack of, of uh, moisture could be a factor as well. Um, there are so many things to be able to keep in mind. The good news is that this exercise not only allows us to think what we're going to need in Mars, but those thoughts are also going to help us develop materials that we'll be able to use here on Earth. I remember when we went to the moon 50 years ago, and uh, when everybody was thinking, if we can go to the moon, we can fill in the blank. All of a sudden, there were so many possibilities of how we could live here on Earth. And that is one of the beauties of this thought process. That even if we weren't to go to Mars, it's developed a thought process of what we can do here on Earth. And um, I think that that is one of the things that inspires me a lot. One of the projects that we were involved with was the master plan of one of the, the centers uh, for NASA. And as part of that, uh, we were supposed to set the standard for the next 20 years as to what the architecture was going to be like. Well, there were many things that we had to think about, not only sustainability, but also the uh, exposure to the environment and this facility that we were designing was in a desert environment. Not much water, uh, lots of wind, lots of heat, extreme temperatures, uh, also dealing with sonic booms uh, from aircraft breaking the sound barrier in that area, uh, being able to uh, have technologies that would be make these buildings self-sufficient, right? So that is some of the things that we were asked for, and that is some of the things that we were, had to consider in some of the buildings that we had to design for NASA. Uh, this project that we designed was a lead platinum building. Uh, the, it was a very, very uh, a successful project that was award-winning. Uh, also, uh, it, uh, it received multiple commendations, and it was just really, really high-profile type project. So we feel very fortunate to be having been part of that. But... I think that the coolest thing about being part of that is it made us realize that that is how we're going to have to be thinking when we go to Mars. 
we need to set the standard as to what the architecture is going to not only look like, but perform in a place like Mars. You know, we're not talking the cities of Los Angeles or New Orleans or New York or anything like that, where there is already a standard, right? We're talking about untouched territory that needs to be developed into something that our future generations are going to have to live with uh, and live comfortably and be able to grow and develop in this other world.